Okie doke. So good afternoon, everybody. A um, few things. I have not received that many um, movie poster assignments. I was planning on having a critique this Wednesday, but my plans, I've had to change my plans. Um, so that will give you some extra time to get it finished and turned in. Um, because um, I'm canceling our, our uh, critique this Wednesday, the whole webinar. Um, I have some uh, medical things that I have to take care of. I have to, doc I have to go to the doctor. So that's going to put that on hold. So we're not going to meet this Wednesday. But um, I do want you to get started um, with your beat, not your beats, and what your, your digital painting. So that's the next assignment. Okay. And we will have one assignment after that and we'll be done. Um, so uh, instead of having the, uh, to repeat, instead of having the critique this Wednesday, we will have it on Monday. Okay. So whatever movie posters I've received, then that's what we will critique. And again, that applies to whoever's here. If you're not here, and uh, for those of you who can attend or watching the recording, if um, you would like to um, have an individual critique, um, I'd be happy to do that. We can have a one-on-one -on -one kind of um, webinar if that suits you. So you're supposed to get that finished and turned in and then again, work on your digital painting. And we've talked about that before. Um, Today, what we're going to do is we're going to work on lesson 12. And this is going to take us a couple of sessions to finish. Um, it deals with um, camera raw. And so I don't know how many of you have uh, digital cameras that save in file in raw file format, but that's what this um, pertains to. So um, it's kind of another, it's an ancillary application built in to Photoshop. Um, I will be giving you a demo that will follow the textbook pretty closely. And I don't know that we'll be able to finish it today. But then in addition to that, I've made available to you um, a video that was recorded by one of our professors, um, Ed ha um, he Heckerman. Um, who uh, teaches photography and he covers it because it is a type of digital darkroom is what it is. So um, we will be covering that on another week as well. Okay, so that's what we're going to work on today. So um, to get started, here are the finished products. Here is um, a mission that has been uh, a photograph of a mission that's been um, retouched and, and finalized. There's also the end one here for a young woman who's been retouched slightly and corrected both in Photoshop and in Camera Raw. Okay, so these right now or at the moment are in Photoshop. But if you want to open them in uh, files in Camera Raw or see all the, the metadata that's associated with them, what you need to do is um, I go to File and you want to make sure that you browse and bridge. This is probably the best way to do that. It's not the only way, but it's one of the ways. So you can see that I have the folder selected with um, for lesson 12 in here. And if we look carefully at each of these, there's a folder for missions, which we'll cover today. We're going to work on the missions today. I don't know that we'll get to retouching her, but We'll see how far we get today. But anyway, um, if we look here in um, in Bridge, and I click on let's let's click on the final file, just one file, um, one click. Not I'm not going to open it just yet because it's already open. But you'll notice at the top here when it previews that it's in the end file. It's a Photoshop file, so it ends in PSD. But if we look at the original file here, you'll see that it ends in CRW. Well, that's the camera raw um, extension for a Canon camera. So for those of you who own Canon cameras that are digital, 
Um, that would be the extension that you would have if you were saving it in, in raw file format. Um, again, with the woman here, we can see the end file, which is a Photoshop file. But if I click right here on the original, we can see that it's an, an NEF file. I think that's an F. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's an icon. That's a, for a, a, a raw file format or a digital um, file format for basically camera raw for um, a Nikon camera. And digital raw, um, you, or camera raw, you can also open JPEG files in them too. But it's a little different. If I just simply double click on this, it's going to open it directly into Photoshop. To open the JPEG in camera raw, I need to right click on it. And you'll notice at the top, it says open in camera raw. Okay, so that's how that's done. You just simply right click on that. So if I single click on any one of these raw file formats, or then it automatically opens in camera raw. So that's what I'm going to do with the mission. Uh, so I'll double click on it and it opens it up. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and expand it so that it fits the entire screen so I don't mess things up. Okay, so I'll move this over here. So this is the original image. Okay, and if we click in here, we can see a number of different things. We can, um, um, let's start in this, right now, this now looks a little different than, well, not too different, but it, it looks a little bit different than uh, the textbook. Um, we'll notice at the top here, okay, that's very, very important. That's the histogram. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with that, um, when we pay it, when we use a histogram, we also use it with curves and we use it, um, for example. And what that does is it gives us the range of lights and darks. And in here, it gives us a range of the, the RGB, the red, green, and blue channels and where most of the colors reside. And if you get a pretty even distribution, um, you can see that it, it right now that this image is, you know, it has a handful of darks, but it has quite a few lights too that are in the, the light range. So to the right, we should have the light regions and to the left, we should have the dark regions okay, of a photograph. Then over here to the right, if I scroll to the top, we can see that we can have that we have a variety of different options available to us. That at the moment, what we're looking at Okay, are the our basic editing session or options right now? We can change the, uh, for example, the exposure, the contrast, highlights, shadows. Um, and the thing that's nice about this is that um, with digital cameras, um, in the end result isn't necessarily what you see. Um, you have all of this. Um, metadata that's built into it that we can tweak at our heart's content. And there's actually there's so many features in here that it can be somewhat over overwhelming. You could also, you know, we can edit because that's what we're in here. You can also select auto and you notice that that's there. You can also select black and white and we can save each of these um, settings. You can also save profiles and I can go back and forth from, you know, auto and I can turn off black and white. I can save these profiles um, and have multiple versions available to me if I want. But if, again, if I click black and white, I can select auto settings. If that's where I want it to be and I think that looks okay, then I'm good. And oftentimes when I'm working with my own images, that's a good starting point for me. And oftentimes the auto settings work just fine. They're minor tweaks and sometimes they're major and I don't like them at all. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off each of those for right now. Okay. So if I twirl up and instead of the basic settings, you can see that we also have curves. We have detail. We have a color mixer. We have split toning. We have optics, geometry, effects, and calibration. A huge number of categories here. Okay. And as I open up each one of those, you can see that there's just a huge number of options for me in many of these, not all of them, but quite a few. 
Okay. So we're just going to work today with the, the mission and we're going to work with some basic settings here. Now, what you can also do is we have over to the left, I have the film strip and I kind of like it to the left. That's what they have specified. If I click on there, it turns it off. This little button to the left. Um, and that will become apparent in a minute when we have multiple images that we want to um, change all of them at the same time. Also, you'll notice that, for example, let's say that I overexpose this or I want it underexposed or I change the temperature of it or whatever. Um, let's change the temperature of it and let's really warm it up. Now, let's see, you know, that looks kind of neat, but I want to compare it to the original. Well, if I click on this little button down here, um, let's do that. Notice that I can toggle back and forth. And if I click on this one, I can see the before and the after. So either way, whatever works for us, you can, you know, you toggle through all of these and you can go back. So that's what these do. They allow you to see them side by side, you know, before and after. And sometimes, you know, whatever is comfortable to you. And you can see, gee, I kind of like that warm, that warm look. I'm going to go with that. Really, there is no, from my opinion, there is no right or wrong. Um, I think there's better solutions than others, but there is technically no right or wrong. Okay. Now, what we can also do is if you don't like the settings that you've applied and you want to bring it back to the original, hold down the option key. And this is true for just about all the windows that you have in, in Photoshop, is that if you hold down the option or alt key and you click reset, it will take you back to your original settings. Okay. So there's lots and lots of options here. So let's start with the, um, the Adobe Raw here for the, um, the mission. And let's start to make the changes that they want us to make for it. We'll start again with the, the basic settings here. Okay. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and right now, you can see that the white balance is set to as shot. Okay. Well, what I can do here is I can click and you can see some other presets that are already available for us. Well, this was on a cloudy day. So I can go ahead and I can switch that and you can see how it warms up some of the colors to correct for that. That would be one of the options for us. So that's not a bad way to start. Then we can also come back in here and you can see already that it changed the temperature and it changed the tint a little bit for it. If you want at any time, we can always go back to as shot and you can see how it changes again in the temperature and the tint for this. Now, when we're done with this, when it, with any of these, we can always save them out as a Photoshop digital image. And it will be, it, in most cases, just about everything is non-destructive. Um, many of the things that we're doing here in here, we can do in, um, in Photoshop, but it's a little bit different in that, again, we're pl playing right now with the metadata that's built into the image itself. It was um, av made available when we took the image in whatever camera we were using. Okay. So I'm going to go back again and I'm going to switch to, let's switch again. I'm going to switch to not as shot but I'm going to select cloudy day. And then what I want to do is I'm, I am going to come down here and I'm going to compare this so that we have the before and after. And you can see that it really brightens it up considerably. Okay. The, the, the pinks, you know, it, does that, is that exactly the way it looked on that day? Probably not, but it becomes a much nicer, you know, much richer looking image. So, Part, and this is what a lot of students probably don't like to hear from me, is that um, I think to tell what really works is that without your camera and um, it's just to look really hard before you take the images and, when, and afterwards to see what it was really like and try to um, memorize that, see what it, how it works. It's especially true if you have taken any drawing classes that I think um, it forces you to look much harder than you normally 
do. And you will um, have a much better visual memory for things like this. And you'll know in your photographs, you know, that gee, maybe the darks are too darks or that I should make push the darks a little bit more. Maybe I need to pull out some highlights. The color has been tweaked a little bit. All those things. So that's typically what I rely on all my years, mostly is, you know, back in the day when I was a commercial illustrator and I drew a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So, um, and if I decide that I want to tweak the color of something, it's because I desire to, not because I'm putting it in the hands of Photoshop and saying, well, whatever it does, it must be right. Okie doke. So some of the next things that they want us to change here, and I got to look at the book myself for some of these. So we're going to change the exposure, okay? And they want us to, to boost it a little bit. So we can do that. We can go ahead and we can take that and we can boost that up to maybe 0.5 to make it a little bit brighter. And again, while we're doing that, we have that nice comparison over to the left, which wasn't available before. So that's really kind of cool. Um, under contrast, we're not doing anything. We're just leaving it alone. But you might want to play with that. Again, if you want you know, more contrast, less contrast, it's up to you. But my, my feeling is, and look at the, is the, the histogram and see how it changes as I'm you know, sliding these back and forth. And it doesn't hurt to, to slide them one, you know, one extreme or another. Because you can always come back and, uh, and, and just reset it to zero if you want. The next thing that it wants us to do is to reduce the highlights a little bit. So we're going to pull that down just a little bit. So on the high end, maybe minus 20. And if there are any of these settings that you don't like, you know, then that's something to pay close attention to. They're also going to boost the shadows a little bit. So we're going to push those up to 70, I believe plus 70, or is it 7 point? Yeah, 70, quite a bit. So notice what we're doing here is that when we leave it at um, zero, especially when we look at the, the, the bushes here and the trees, that we really don't see much detail, do we? That the shadows are really, really dark. So if I come in here and I boost this up, Notice what it's doing. It's leaving the midtones and the highlights alone, but it's boosting the light and the shadows. And it's not that it's, you know, uh, let me go all the way to 70 before I continue to talk here. There we go. So now what we can see, again, a nice comparison. You can see a lot of detail in these bushes and in the trees. That's where you notice it most. Um, the thing of it is, it's that all of that data was originally there. It's just that however we had the camera the, left the shot the image with the camera settings is that was how it, it you know, it took it. But it doesn't mean that, that the other data that we're pushing and we're making available here is being made up. It was there all along. It's just that we're just um, uh, making it more visible now. Okay. So whites, we're going to go ahead and we're going to... Um, boost that a little bit to 20. Again, it brightens it up a tad. I don't want it that far, just a little bit. Okay. Um, blacks, we're probably going to push or pull it back just a little bit. So I make maybe a minus 10. Okay, and all the while, um, notice how the comparison um, left to right. Clarity, uh, we're going to go ahead and boost that a little bit, and we're going to bump that up to 20. How do I know, you know, what numbers to use? And I'm using the textbook. But when you're doing it, again, my recommendation is to, you know, crank it all the way to the left or to the right. So in the event that you want kind of a hazy uh, and that could be that you want kind of a hazy, blurry look um, for aesthetic reasons, then by all means, push that. And it's not going to be a permanent change. You can always come back, open up your, your, um, your raw file or your digital, um, you know, uh, negative, basically, and um, go back and make the changes. 
So I want it to be a little bit crisp, sharper. And that seems to be the trend these days to do that. And then the same with the vibrance. We're gonna go ahead and boost that a little bit at the end as well. And if you want it more saturated or less saturated, you can do that. So that's what we're gonna do. We wanna go ahead and we're gonna boost the vibrance a little bit. And that's gonna be a plus 20 as well. So already they were good images. It's just that we're making it better. That's all. Okie doke. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna apply sharpening to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close basic. Uh, let me scroll down a little bit, see if it's here. No, so I'm gonna go ahead and close basic. And what I want to do, because they've changed this a little bit and the textbook isn't showing this. Let me come back up here. Um, this textbook was made before and it's been updated and changed since. So the sharpening for this is changed. So let me see where this is. Let's look in detail here. And this is where it is. There used to be a little button along the top here that I don't see anymore, but this is gonna be under um, detail. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, change the amount a little bit. So we can, the sharpening image is set to 40, we'll leave that. Um, noise reduction, or the radius rather, um, let's go ahead. We got sharpening one, noise reduction. We can leave these alone. So I'm just gonna leave these alone and they'll be fine. Okay, so they have changed this since the book was done. So I'm trying to follow what the book wants and I don't see any, the old timey um, settings that they used to have. So they've made some significant changes to camera raw. And some of which, to uh, be perfectly honest, I'm not familiar with. So for example, like here under effects, if you wanted to add camera grain to this, we can really crank that up. It gets really, really grainy. So I don't. I'm going to bring that back. I don't want any grain added to that. But again, you can see all the things that we can change to that. So the next thing that we're going to do, I think we have everything that's done here. And again, you can see that the histogram is pretty even except for the blues at the high end. And that's due to the sky. But we want to leave that alone. Okay, We've already made some tweaks or some changes. But by and large, it's left alone. Um, we've made some sharpening changes. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going <clears> to, <throat> we've already done all of these um, pretty much. So let me show you what happens when you're ready, when you're done with this. So you can either open it in directly in Photoshop. That's one option for you. That's what open means. If you're done with this, then what we can do is we can save it. So if I click done, um, it saves it. And if I go back again, so I'm gonna go back again to um, bridge and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open that file again. And notice it goes back to the same settings that I had before. So it now here is the before and here is the after. They're, they're identical because this it, it saved the settings that I had from before. So probably what I want to do, and again, this has changed a little bit from what it used to be, is um, I want to save this as, because I probably didn't want to save it as that. I want to open, let's open as a, um, I'm going to go back for a minute. No, let me see here. Because what I want to do, oh shoot, they've made changes. I knew this so well. I can open as a copy, <clears throat> I can open as object, or I can just open it in Photoshop now. But really what I wanted to do is I wanted to save this as <clears throat> a new camera raw image. So um, yeah. Let me undo. Let me go back and see if I can't undo all of this and reset all of this. Yeah, see, now when I reset it, 
It just goes back to the settings that I just used. Now I can always go back and make changes to those. I can always go back to basic and you can see that it's set to cloudy day. Okay, we change the exposure. We change the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, the whites. We changed all of those things. But again, those sliders can be changed. They can um, be updated. But it's not the same as what we had before um, with seeing the original file. So we can go back to it, but we have to do that by hand. So um, let me go back here. I'm going to see if I can't. cancel that. And I'm going to go back to the, yeah, yeah, see, I screwed it up. Well, sorry. Boy, I thought I had this down. Let's open that back up. Well, you know what? It is what it is at the moment. So let's do the other ones. Let's go ahead and open the others in Camera Raw, and then we'll, um, I'll show you what we can do with that. And that will be the reason for having um, the vertical <clears throat> um, film strip over here to the left, because if we have separate images of the, uh, the shots taken at a location, but we want all of the changes that we make to be uniform, then this is a good place to do that, is in camera raw. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and just select done. And I'm going to go back to bridge again, and we'll open that back up. So let's go back to bridge. And these will be found in here. Okay, so here in this folder, we have three separate images that were all taken the same day, about the same time. <clears throat> but we want them to be um, uniform in color. And you can see from the, the three images here, they look, each one looks distinctly different. So with all three of them selected, if I double click on it, it will open each of them in camera raw. So now what I need to do, and you'll notice that these are, these are new settings that we have here. What I want to do now is I want to determine which one of these, I'm going to go ahead and hold down the shift key to select them all. But you'll notice that one is keyed. You'll notice that it's highlighted over the others, but all of them, are visible now, I've been selected. This one is the one that we are keying it to, the one that's open. And as I change this one, these two will change to match it. So that's what we want to do. So that's what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and we want to sync the settings for this. So I'm going to click here and we want to Merge the HDR, no, copy, edit settings. I want to hold on here. I want to sync the settings. So let's click there. That's for saving it. So that's where they changed it. Damn them. OK, so these are some other features too. Now it's here. So that's where I should have saved it. So I should probably go back and I'll do that again when we do that here. So this is where we can save it from here. Um, you can copy and edit settings from here. This is where you're going to save it if you want to save it as a, as a Photoshop. Um, digital negative. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and you can see that these were grayed out. But with this one selected, if I hold down the shift key, and select them all. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. I want to zoom back out. Let's go back again. There we go. So these three are highlighted and they will automatically be synced. So that's what we want to do. We want to sync all of them. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and let's go back and do some of, and make some of the changes that we had made before. Um, I could actually you know what? Let me go out of this for a minute. Let me try this. So I'm going to depart from the textbook here and try this. Let's go back to bridge. Okay. And I've got these three that I want. Um, 
but I also want the original image that I had. So I'm going to add that to the folder. I'm going to go back to um, lesson 12. And I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to move this one that I created. And I'm going to move it inside this folder. Okay. Now I can double click here and I have four of them. So this is the one that I had edited and I want to sync all of the others to this one. So if I select all of them like so, and I double click, they're all in here. And now if I hold down the shift key and select them all, I wanna make sure that all of these now are synced to this. So let's see how they've changed this and how they've done that. So if I right click in here, um, I want to, I don't want to save the image. I want to, oh man, they've changed this. I don't want to change the orientation. I want to make sure that all of these enhance details. Well, let's go back and let's make sure that all of these are synced to this. So as I begin to change this, let's go back up here. So for right now, um, we have our basic edit, edit settings, okay? And we have our white balance and we have our exposure because none of these, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is the one that's selected, okay? and it's set to cloudy. And so all of these should, when I begin to change this, should be, so white balance, I'm gonna make sure that they're all set to cloudy. And notice how all of them over to the left are now changing. So if I had done this one from the get-go, notice how all of these to the left are changing. So again, the exposure, if I go back and I, you know, start changing those. Let's go back again and make, make those changes. But they're now syncing from that. And that's what I want. So I need to go back in myself and look at those settings that we were working with. So we changed the cloudy and we're gonna work with the others. It should take just a minute. So the exposure we boosted to 0.5. And again, as this one changes, all of them change. Um, if we change, we're gonna leave contrast alone. Highlights, um, we um, reduced a little bit. We took it down to minus 20. Um, shadows, um, we boosted. So you can see all of them. Now they're all changing. And they've all updated to the one that I wanted. Now I can open them all from here now or I can, and I can go ahead and from here and I can click right here and it gives me these options for saving this. So I can either open it, open them all from here with them all selected or I can save them. And the different ways of saving them now are as we can use these custom saving settings. We can either select the existing folder or we can create a new folder for this. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a folder and I want it inside the mission folder here. So I'm gonna right click, or actually let's go ahead and just create a new folder. And I'll call this edited um, settings. Edited photos. Okay, so I have a brand new folder. So that's where this is going to be saved. So I select that, that's the new folder in here. Now we have these options here. And this, when you save this here as a .dng file, this is a digital negative. And this is a Photoshop um, raw file format, basically. And that's what raw file formats are, they're digital negatives, but this will end in a .dng file. And you wanna do that if you wanna maintain or keep all of these settings that you can always go back and change. The next thing that you want to do is decide how do you want to name this? And it gives you lots of options. You first have the document name. So I'll name it mission. Okay. The next one down here. Now, do you want a serial number? You can have a two, a one, two, three, four, five, six digit 
let's go ahead and use a three digit one. Okay. And then from over here, you can also, if you want um, to work with a serial letter, you can do that. If you want the date, you can also do that. And there's different formats that you can use for the date. Um, I'm not going to use any of these for right now, but that should work just fine for us. And then the format, we're going to save it as a digital negative. Now, you could also save these as JPEGs, TIFF, Photoshop, or Ping. I don't know why you would want to save any of these from here like that, but I would prefer the digital negative. Compatibility, RAW, 12.4 or later. You can also change that so you can use previous versions. So if you only have, or if you're maybe a client of yours only has access to older files, um, then maybe you would want to use it, you know, save it backwards as a later version. Um, you can also embed um, fast data, you know, use lossy compression. You have all of these options available to you. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and save them as those raw file formats or as the, as a digital negative, I should say. So I'll just go ahead and I'll save that. And now when I'm ready, if I want to open this one, okay, this top one here, all I have to do is click here and I'm just going to click on the one and that's it. And I can go ahead and I can select open and it should open it directly in Photoshop. And so there I have it. Now I can come back in here and I can make other changes to it. So for example, and this isn't in the, in the book, but this is something that we can think about doing. What if I wanted to get rid of this street light? If I wanted to get rid of the, the telephone booth, if I want to get rid of this sign, these would, things, you know, would be things that I would probably want to do to dress up the image. And the only way you can do that would be in, the Photoshop, it would be in Photoshop. Now, one of the things that I didn't show you in Camera Raw is that you can um, crop it. But as far as I can tell, and don't quote me on this because I could be wrong, is that um, I think it a, would be a better idea to crop it in Photoshop. Because as I pointed out early on in the semester, that when you crop in Photoshop, if you make sure that you have delete crop pixels turned off, then um, you can always return to the original. Now, you can probably do that in Camera Raw as well, but I don't know. I've never cropped an image in Camera Raw. But I don't know, right now, I don't know that I would trust that. I, if, I, if I plan on cropping an image, I would want to do it in um, in Photoshop instead of camera raw. So those are some of the nice things that we can do with that. There are just so many options for you in here. It's it, it can be really overwhelming, all the little um, uh, tweaks and twists and turns that you can make with an image. It, it is a bit overwhelming. And it's something that you're going to have to play with and play with each of those settings. Okay. Now, once I save it as a Photoshop file, um, we can go back to Camera Raw, but it's um, not as easy. Um, what I would want to do, let me see if I can do it. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to save it as a Photoshop image. And I might really goof up here. If I do, then that's the way it goes. So I'll save it as a Photoshop file. So this will be start and I'm going to say working file. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that inside my folder here. So now this is a Photoshop file. And now what I might want to do is make a copy of this. Command J. And I'm going to turn this into a smart object. So I'm going to go to image or layer. And I'll go ahead and I'll turn this into a smart object. So let's go back under here. Um, Smart object, convert to smart object. Okay. Now, if I double click on this, did it do it? No. How about if I, wait a minute. Let me undo. Well, let's go back here. I'm going to right click. I double clicked on that. If I right click on it, let's see if I can't open it. 
Because what I want to be able to do is open this back up in camera raw. So I'm going to go back. Let me see if I can't do this before the day ends here. I'm going to go back and I'm going to come back in here. So not that one, that one. Let's go back outside of that and look inside lesson two. And where did I put my working file? It's mission, 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 start. Here's my working file. So that's a Photoshop file. So now if I right click on here, let's see if I can't open this now. Yeah, see it's not allowing me to open it in um, in camera raw and I know that I can do this. So let me come up here, open with Photoshop, preview, mm. They've made changes on this. So I'm going to have, the next time we meet, I'm going to have to come back to you with this because I know it can be done, but by default, you can't. It takes a little bit of work to get it open. So in the meantime, let's get started with the, um, the woman and we'll work on her for a little bit. And then we'll call it a day. We won't be able to finish her today, but we'll get started with it. Okay, so one of the things that we want to do with her so let me go back to lesson 12 and we'll select her as I'm going to double click on her and we'll open it up. And what we want to start with with her, let's scroll to the top under edit basic settings is that we want to start with the, the white balance. Okay. So when we do that here, we have by default, you can see that it is as shot. Now, again, we can use auto settings. And you'll notice that that changed the, the appearance of her rather sharply or abruptly. Okay. Another way to do that is to click on this little white balance tool right here. And I can move over and where you want to do is what you want to do is you want to select an area that's really, really white. And notice that that made a dramatic change to her as well. Okay. <clears throat> See the difference? We'll compare like so. So again, you'll notice that she has sort of a greenish tinge and now it's much warmer over here in the refine setting, okay? So that's one of the things that they want us to do. The next thing is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh, boost the exposure a little bit, make it a little bit brighter to 0.3. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to boost the contrast a little bit and this one, um, again, maybe just 0.15 or so. You do it too much, overkill. But again, for aesthetic reasons, you might want to do that sometime. And then highlights, nope, sorry, clarity is the next thing that we're going to change. We're going to boost that to plus eight. The clarity adds sharpness a little bit to it. Okay. And look at pretty dramatic change from before and after. So now what we want to do, if I hold down the shift key, I can open the object. I want to open in Photoshop. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, this smart, oh, it will open as a smart object. So this is new. This is something that, see, I'm learning too. When I open this, if I hold down the shift key and I select open the object, it's going to open it as a smart object. And that's where we will be able to um, edit it from Photoshop and go back into camera raw. Okay. So you can see that this is a smart object now. Um, this is pretty much where I'm going to end the day today. But if I were to double click on here, this takes me back to camera raw. So that's kind of nice, okay? So again, let's go back and I select okay, and it knows, so it's preparing it, and it's still a smart object. 
And now I can go back and forth from Photoshop to camera raw. Okay. Um, well, let's keep going. We have a little bit of time left. Um, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to adjust levels in here a little bit. So we're going to go to and we're going to start adding some adjustment layers to her. So levels is right here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to play again with the lights and the darks. So if I click right here, down here, it says I can calculate a more accurate histogram. And that's what I'm going to do. And that rounds it out a little bit and makes it a little bit nicer. Okay, so that's a big plus. The next thing that you might want to do, and I've, I've done this with a number of my images. And just for the heck of it, I will show you one of mine. That, um, let's go back over here. Here's one of my gallery images. And you can see that I've tweaked this just a little bit. And I did a rendering in Lightwave. But I added a levels to it. Now, if I select the levels in here, I boosted, you know, I can adjust my middle tones a little bit, make it a brighter room, a darker room, and that sort of thing. And again, this is all optical. It's, you know, what looks good to me. So I can undo, or I can go back to the original settings and I can go back again and select auto. That's a good place to start. Notice that it changed the, the midtones a little bit. And I want to make it just the whole room, the whole environment, just a little bit lighter. So I can do that myself. That's what we're doing here. So I'm going to go back to her. Um, let's go back to the, not that layer, to her. So we've changed that a little bit. So now what we want to do is we want to um, go back and we want to um, change the, the value of the middle range to, instead of one, we're going to change it to 90. OK? So that darkens her up a little bit. And already we've made you know significant changes to it. So if you want to edit her in the saturation in camera raw, then again, what we need to do is what I did a moment ago, is that we need to double click on this icon. And the only way that this will work is if this is a smart object. So I'll double click here and we will go back to camera raw. Okay. And so now what we're going to do, we're going to re um, go back to, let's scroll up here. And instead of basic, okay, I'm going to use the color mixer here. And what we can do is we can reduce the reds minus two. Because she is, you know, looks a little sunburned at the moment. So we can, you know, drag this down a little bit to minus two. Um, we can also reduce the oranges. So all of the warm colors we're reducing just a little bit. Orange is considerably more. We're going to go back down to maybe minus 10 to a much, you know, more pleasant look here. And the same with the magentas. We're going to change that as well. Um, where's our magentas here? Uh, that's down at the bottom. So that's going to be minus three. Anything else we need to change? Um, so what we can do now is I'm going to go ahead and, because for the other things that we're going to do with her that we'll have to finish up on another day, I'll click OK. And that prepares the image. OK, and that works. But for some of the other things that we're going to begin to do here, we want to retouch her a little bit. And we can't do that with the smart object. But we can always get back to camera raw if we leave that intact. So what we want to do is duplicate this layer. So that's Command J. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rasterize this layer, but it leaves the original one intact. So to rasterize it, I go to, to layer. And I go to smart objects. And I don't want to to convert it because it already is. I just need to rasterize it. So I'll go to Smart Objects and I will rasterize. There we go. And now it will allow me to make the changes that I want. But again, if I turn that layer off, they're identical at the moment. But if I click on this layer, and let's say I want to get rid of some of her um, beauty marks. Let, let's say, for example, for this, the client doesn't want the little um, 
uh, nose um, gem that she has in her nose there. So if I wanted to get rid of that and I wanted to use the, the healing brush tool, notice that it's not allowed with smart objects, so I can't do that. So instead, I'll turn that layer off, turn this one back on, the one that I rasterize, and now I can come in and I can make some revisions to that. Okay, so we'll come down here. Let's come back up here and I need to make this bigger. So use the right bracket. Whoops, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Now I can come over here and I can get rid of it in a heartbeat. Uh, if, uh, depending on how many of her little, you know, beauty marks you want to get rid of, you can get rid of most of those. Okay. Um, I don't know that I would go overboard with it. The same would be true for some of the wrinkles, you know, that you can go through some of this and get rid of some of those laugh lines. You can really go nuts with this stuff if you're not careful. And if you go overboard with it, it's not going to look terribly natural. So, you know, that's one of the things that we're going to do. Get rid of that. Finalizes that. And it looks pretty nice, believable. Again, I want to leave most of these beauty marks alone. You know, just some. You know. And, you know, I don't know how many of you look at, and I don't know, I guess you could go overboard with your arms, but I'm not going to do that. Maybe a cup, couple of them in her face, forehead, and that sort of thing. Get rid of them. Okay. That ought to do it. Okay. That's all we need. And then probably what else we're going to do? That time, a um, couple more minutes. Um, what we want to do is that we want to. Um, Go ahead and lighten up or get rid of some of the coloration in, her, in the sclera of her eyes here. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, let's see. So this one, I guess I should have named corrections. So I'll go ahead and I'll rename that one corrections. There we go. Okay. So now what we want to do, and I've already done some of this, is the content to wear heel. Okay, so we've done that with a spot healing brush. And now what we need to do is to, we need to adjust the skin tones a little bit. Um, I don't know, I should have changed the, gotten, made her, her eyes a little bit lighter, or whites of her eyes. Now there's various ways of doing that, but I'm going to try to use for right now. I'm going to use the dodge tool, and that might that might be a big mistake. But let me see if I can do that just a little bit. And yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. You don't want to overdo it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to use curves. Um, let me go ahead and select this layer right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use curves. Uh, I guess we wanted to decrease the fuzziness a little bit. You know what? Um, it's getting late in the day. It's three o'clock. So we'll finish this um, next Monday after we have our critique. So I'll save this for right now. This is going to be, um, we'll go ahead and I'll save this file. I'll get, again, I'll save it as a working file. And I don't want to save it in the mission folder. I'll save it here. And we'll finish it that up. Because what we're going to do is we're going to um, fine tune and soften. Because you can see her pores in here. And we're going to soften some of that a little bit. And that's what we're going to finish up 
um, next week. No hurry, because we're really kind of ahead of schedule on all of this. I covered what I wanted to today for the most part, just to introduce you to Camera Raw. And I apologize because they have made changes to it even after the textbook was published. And this is a 2020 textbook that I'm looking at. So I don't use it that much. Um, when we watch Ed Heckerman's um, video, um, again, it's for an older version, but because he works extensively with digital um, photography, um, he uses Camera Raw a lot more than I do. So I think that tutorial um, that he made available on YouTube will be very helpful for all of us. So unless there are any questions from you, we're gonna, I'm gonna call it a day and we'll finish this up on another day. Okay, any questions from anybody? Don't forget to get your, um, your movie poster in or if you want feedback on it on an individual basis, let me know and I can do that. And then you can resubmit No, no questions, no comments. Everybody's clear on what needs to be done. Okay, in that case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pause um, the recording.